Hello everyone, Mr. Ish here. Thank you for joining me for today's video. Though it says here graphs of functions, I'm not going to be talking about functions in general. I'm going to be talking about absolute value graphs, exponential function graphs, and logarithmic function graphs. Basically just those three different varieties of graphs is what we're going to present in today's video. Let's start with absolute value functions. f of x is equal to absolute value of x, this. Remember the absolute value sign, absolute value. The basic uh, graph of an absolute value is a vertex at the origin extending this way. Y-axis symmetry reflected across the y-axis. So it's symmetrical about the y-axis. And this is what an absolute value x, the basic uh, graph looks like. There's no translation, no uh, vertical or horizontal shift at all. How does a graph, graph change in terms of a shift? Let's look at that. If the graph has an absolute value of x minus h, and you know here h is going to represent some number, you know you're going to shift to the right by h units, and now the graph will have become this. Again, there will be a center line, which is your line of axis or your line of symmetry, and we can shift again in the other direction by doing absolute value of x. You all can think back to the parabolic graphs, the quadratic parabolas, x plus h whole square minus k you, you remember how the h shifts with the change in sign well this is going to be my x plus h now we have a shift towards over here towards the left side of the axis again we can also have vertical shifts too let's look at this f of x is equal to absolute value of x minus k and k can be any number well look at this now we've shifted the same graph from the vertex of origin down along the x-axis by k units. So we've gone down by k units. Okay, that's a vertical shift. Let's look at another one. f of x is equal to absolute value of x. This should be absolute value, not a parenthesis, plus k. The same graph with the same stretch, compression stretch, shifted up by k units. And you know you can add a coefficient over here. Like let's look at this. f of x is equal to a into x plus h. An absolute value coefficient here in A. If A is larger than, you can have a compressed graph. Remember, if A is larger than 1, it will be compressed. Compressed like a letter V. If A is something larger than 0, but it happens to be less than 1, like a fractional number, you can have a vertically stretched graph. It will look like a very broad V. So keep that in mind, the effect of the coefficients. I just want, before I end the topic of absolute value graphs, I want to show you the reflections of these type of graphs. They're rather, they're rather easy, easy reflections. Let's look at this. f of x is equal to minus absolute value of x. You take the original upward facing v and you point it downwards. You reflect it across the x-axis. That's the effect of that minus coefficient here. You reflect it downwards. Let's look at a combination of moves here. Minus x plus h minus k. How is this going to be? Well, you can have a, a downward facing absolute value function. It's going to shift towards the left and then it's going to shift downwards because of the minus k. And this graph might look like something over here in this quadrant right here. And it's pointing downwards. See? Minus h comma minus k is my vertex. Simply because of these effects. Let's look at this. Minus absolute value x minus h plus k. Here, what's my vertex? Vertex over here is going to be h comma k in the first quadrant, pointing downwards. That's my h comma k. So be aware of all of these varieties. A minus here implies a downward pointing absolute value function. I like absolute value graphs. They look interesting to me. So that's it for the absolute value graphs. I want to talk next about exponential functions. Exponential functions, the graphs of exponential functions, they will have the form of e to the power of x. And you know f of x is y, so it's y is equal to e to the power of x. A basic exponential graph function will look like this. It's going to go right here to 0, 1. And this right here is basically not going to be pointing upward. It's going to go down here along this trying to get as close as possible to these y values of 0 
but never touching it but ever getting so close. Why is it intercepting at 0, 0,1? Because if you put 0 in place of that x here, e to the power of 0, right? e to the power of 0, what are you going to get? 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Technically, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1 because you cannot do 0 to the power of 0. That's undefined. But any normal number to the power of 0 or expression is equal to 1. So this is what this graph looks like. But I don't want to show you the typical graph. I want to show you some of the the wonderful reflections of exponential graphs and the only way I can do that is by involving a couple of reflections and vertical shift. So let's show you some of these interesting reflections of this type of function and I'll do that by creating a new plot over here. Exponential graphs and logarithmic graphs have some of the most interesting and by interesting I mean beautiful looking graphs. So let's look at some of them. You know what the previous fun graph I showed you was e to the power of x with an intercept here at 0, 1, but I don't want to have an intercept at 0, 1. I want to have an intercept right here through the origin. So to have the intercept through the origin, I need to reflect the basic function down by one unit. See, I need to bring this down by one unit to bring the intercept from 0, 1 to 0, 0. And you know if you put 0 in place of e x over here, you'll get e to the power of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so you'll end up with a coordinate of 0, 0. So here's my intercept here for this graph. So let's draw this out. If, if everything before was located above this x-axis line and then going upwards to 0, 1, it's pretty much the same, but everything is shifted down by one unit because of this minus k or minus 1. So your graph is going to look like this, and here it's going through the origin. Let's expand this origin over here. Now I want to reflect this graph across the y-axis. So how can we do that? We just have to modify a sign. What sign will we modify? We'll modify the x. Minus x and minus 1. Here I'm still writing minus 1 because I need it to go to the origin. And now all of a sudden my graph will look like this. And of course these lines have an arrow at the end but I'm not drawing the arrows. Let's do a different type of reflection and a different type of translation over here. Let's look at this. Minus e to the x and now I'm going to add a plus 1. The only reason why I'm going to add a plus 1 because minus e to the x is downward parabola. I mean a downward exponential function with a 0 comma minus 1. But I have to add a 1 to bring the uh, intercept through the origin. So when you do that, your intercept is 0 comma 0, but your graph is going to look like this. You see that? It's still going through the origin. Let's make this a little larger. My drawing is a little bit sloppy, but if you use a graphic calculator, you'll see it, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so y, at y is equal to minus e to the power of x plus 1 is a reflection of this basic graph right here, but across the x-axis. Remember, the basic function was right here, this one right here. By reflecting it across the x-axis, now I've made it this right here. Okay, now let's do one more modification over here, we're going to take the same graph and we're going to reflect the original one across the x-axis and the y-axis. Watch this. I'm putting a minus here, then I'm putting a minus here, and then I'm putting a plus one because I still need, to, need it to go to the origin. And your graph is going to look something like this. Watch this, alright? So, let's show some arrowheads over here. My basic y is equal to e to the x minus one was this graph right over here. Then I did y is equal to e to the minus x plus 1. This graph became this one right here. Then I did y is equal to minus e to the power of x plus 1. That was this graph over here. You can see that. You see how we reflected it across the x-axis. Then lastly I did y is equal to minus e to the power of minus x. That very original graph reflected twice. It reflected across the x-axis based on this. A uh, y-axis based on this minus sign, then uh, across the x-axis based on this coefficient minus sign, and that's this graph over here. So you can see the four graphs over here, and each has been reflected by the effect of this minus sign. The minus one plus one was only to vertically shift up or down to keep the origin as the intercept point. So you can see it looks pretty interesting. This is just a, a preview of functional graphs. I want to next look over some of the beautiful graphs of logarithmic functions. Let's look at a logarithmic function. 
And I'm going to start, of course, by showing you what a basic log function is. Then we'll modify that to create an effect of a beautiful set of graphs. And these graphs are beautiful based, basically based on their reflections. A log x graph looks something like this going through 1, 0, and I've presented this in a previous video. It's going to point towards positive infinity and minus infinity in this direction. And this curve is actually, if you draw it properly, it's actually coming as close as possible to the y-axis, getting as close but never touching it. The intercept here is 1, 0 because if you put 1 in place of x, you do a log of 1, you'll get a 0. You cannot put a log of 0 because it's undefined. That's why as you get closer to this 0, x coordinate 0, you get a situation of asymptote where the curve tries to reach it but it never does. It gets infinitely close to it but it never gets close enough. Our goal to show you some of these logarithmic functions in terms of the beauty of their graphs is not to use this function. We have to again do some modification right here because I want the intersection to be here at the origin. So I'm going to erase this and, show, and create that change. Then we'll use that, that basic graph to show some reflections. Start with a plot. To start these reflections, we need a basic logarithmic function and that basic logarithmic function cannot be x anymore because we know when you use x we have an intercept of 1 comma 0. I want the intercept to be the origin. So now we have to do a horizontal shift. It will be x. Remember that plus and minus h? Well it's something similar to plus and minus h. And here h of course represents a number. I'm going to use x plus 1 because I need everything to shift by one unit to the left towards the minus side. And that will make origin my point of interception. And check it out, if you put the origin x value here is 0, log of 0 plus 1 is a log of 1, that will give me a y value of 0 and that will make your origin your intercept point. You see the original was log x, but we've added a plus 1 because we need to shift from a 1 comma 0 to a 0 comma 0. But this will also shift our uh, asymptote. Remember originally the y axis was the asymptote, but that's fine. I want the interception to be right here, the intersection through the origin. When we draw this graph, we're going to get something which looks like this. Coming as close as possible to this minus 1 line. x equals minus 1. Never touching it, but coming close to it. Put minus 1 over. Minus 1 plus 1 is a 0. Log of 0 is undefined. You can't do it. So you'll have this asymptote, vertical asymptote. Before it was the y-axis, now it's x equals minus 1. But that's fine, because this is the graph I want to use to show you the various reflections. And those reflections are pretty interesting. Let's reflect this same graph across the x-axis and the way we'll do that is by putting a minus log x plus 1 and our graph will all of a sudden become like this all right log x plus 1 and then minus log x plus 1 reflecting it across the x-axis but i want to create some more reflections because right now we've done an up and down reflection i want to have right and left reflections and we will do that by modifying this graph in another way. Let's look at it. We write log and now look at what we'll do over here. We'll do 1 minus x. When you do 1 minus x, you've essentially changed the vertical asymptote to a positive 1 and I'll show you why. If you put a positive 1 over here, you'll get a 1 minus 1 is a 0. Log of 0 is undefined. Undefined is represented on a graph in terms of an asymptote. What if we put 0 over here? 1 minus 0 is a 1. Log of 1 is 0, which is my intersection point right here, origin, which is what I want to do. So what does log of 1 minus x look, look like in terms of this graph? Well, it's going to be a reflection of that graph, but it will be a reflection across the y-axis. So how is that graph going to look? It's going to look like this right here. See, it's coming in this direction right here. Let's modify it once more. Let's put a minus log, 1 minus x, of this original, modifying it by two minus signs. You can have two reflections. You can have reflection across the x-axis and the y-axis, and our graph will look like this. And you can pay special attention to the vertical asymptotes and the intersection point. But look at it. It looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? The original graph modified in terms of reflections and these horizontal shifts only to keep the intersection at the origin. So log x plus 1, my basic uh, graph over here, look, 
over here with this arrowhead. Minus log x plus 1, I modified it and it became this graph over here going up this direction. Then I did log of 1 minus x and that became this graph over here pointing in this direction. And finally minus log of 1 minus x was this graph over here. And you can see the four arrowheads representing these four. If you look at this video again and again, you can see how these various uh, shifts occurred and you can see each of the uh, curve individually. For this function, for the exponential function, and you know the absolute value function was rather easier in terms of these two other functions shown. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, feel free to use any type of software graphing tool. It makes all of this even more interesting. Thank you for liking, thank you for sharing. Please subscribe. Have a nice day. Bye.